Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Dixon, and I wanted to thank you very much for inviting me to share a few uh, little information about pain control and permanent makeup with you today. I hope that your, uh, your meetings go very well and that your seminar is very successful, first of all. Um, okay, pain control is vital for the conduct of our profession of permanent makeup. Unlike body tattooing, we're tattooing uh, on the face, around the eyes, and the lips, uh, eyebrows, very sensitive places, and pain control is vital. I won't give you an entire history, but just briefly um, what I'm using and, and works for me. Okay, let's start at the top and work down. For eyebrows, I go ahead and I, I buff them with a fine uh, buffing brush. I buy it at Sally's. You can buy them at Sally's. They're for fingernails. They're very fine. You just want to remove the dead <clears throat> skin on, on the uh, epidermis. So I buff those, and then I will put on, for 20 minutes, some um, comfort cream. Now, Comfort Cream has tetracaine, lidocaine, and epinephrine. And uh, after 20 minutes, I remove one. Uh, well, let's talk eyebrows. I remove the Comfort Cream, clean the skin. You can use alcohol. And then you design your brow. You get your clients okay and make your marks, whatever you're going to do and whether you do... Um, single needle beautiful hair strokes or whether uh, some other technique go ahead and start and then have ultra duration there ultra duration seeks um, goes into the skin very quickly it also um, compresses the dermis it takes out any uh, edema or swelling and and it controls the pain beautifully so you get a nice uh, result find that sweet spot I also use Numb Pot to maintain the numbness on the brow and, and uh, also to clean the skin because it cleans off the pigment. Okay, let's go to eyeliner. Uh, I use Comfort Cream for 20 minutes. Um, put it on the upper crease of the eyelid and then a bead across the eyelashes and just blend them together. Um, the way, the reason I say to do that because if you just struggle putting it along the eyelashes you're going to get it in the eye. The eye is going to start watering because topical anesthetic sting. Uh, if they're the proper pH they won't burn the eye but it still stings. So keep topical anesthetics out of the eye that way. Set your timer for 20 minutes, no occlusive dressing on the eye. At the end of your 20 minutes, uh, depending on your style, I can tell you what I do. I remove one side. I'm right-handed, so I always start on the left side, and I am sitting down. Uh, I remove it from one eye. I make, um, I paint on the pigment with fine tip makeup brush, and, and then I have them open and close their eye, especially on the top lid, and then I start. I never work over empty skin, but anyway, let's talk about pain control. Then I put a layer of tag gel. Why? Because I don't want a liquid around the eye. I use a gel around the eye so it doesn't go flying into the eye. Um, however, don't panic if a pupil dilates. It just means that it, uh, some local anesthetic got into the eye, excuse me, and, um, and dilates the pupil because epinephrine will do that. Go to eye number two, do the same thing. Open the skin, get in your color. For your first pass, put on your tag gel, go back to the other eye, clean it off, and I use NumPot. I only use tag maybe twice during the procedure. It depends on how long it takes you to procedure, to do a procedure. Okay, we've done the brows. So the brows are, are um, buff them, comfort cream, ultra duration liquid, eyeliner, comfort cream, tag gel, and numpot. 
Don't use liquid like ultra duration around the eye. It'll go right in the eye. Just use a gel and you can use NumPot to clean and maintain it. It's very soothing NumPot because the, the liquids and the gels um, have preservatives in them that can be irritating to the skin. And even if they don't have pain, they have a burning sensation. Let's go to lips. Um, lips, believe it or not, comfort cream, 20 minutes. Take it off, mark your lip, do whatever your technique is. Make your quick pass or your first pass. Immediately start using your ultra duration and then make, um, and then NumPot. That's very soothing. Upper lip and then whatever you're being taught, then go to your lower lip. Make sure you get on your ultra duration, go back. <clears throat> when you get control of the pain and swelling, um, your, your procedure is going to go much more smoothly. You're going to be going more uniformly into the proper depth. I just would share with you, don't go too deep. Uh, most people are told to go deeper, stronger, longer is better. And don't, don't go too deep. The very, very shallow skin um, on the lip. And that's all I have to say tonight. I want you to have a wonderful workshop. And I wish you the very best. Um, and I will give you pictures of those topical anesthetics I just taught. Let me say one other thing. If you're working on lips, make sure you have fever blister medication. If your client has any history of herpes at all, make sure they get a prescription for Valtrex. They can take three pills, each pill 500 milligrams. I prescribe that for my patients, 1500 milligrams, one dose, three pills on the day of or the day before their procedure, and then also probably on about day two or three. Um, they don't have to take pills every day, all day, <laughs> for a week anymore. Just 1,500 milligrams Valtrex, first dose, and then I, I like them to have a second dose. And I give them, I send them home with, um, I send them home with Lipertec. Lipertec has a herpes inhibitor. It has a topical anesthetic. One other thing I wanted to mention that's very soothing to them sometimes is 5% lidocaine. It's, it's like a lip balm. And I use that sometimes for eyeshadow and certainly around the lips. So if you have a real sensitive patient, you know, send them home with the 5% lidocaine. Oink, it, it's a lip balm. It's like chapstick. I wish you a very good day. I wish you the very best. And thank you for caring enough to, to attend this educational event. Aloha. Bye-bye.